If you go camping with your EV truck, or if you plan to use a campsite to charge up your EV truck, these adapters will lead to nothing but lost money and a whole bunch of empty batteries. So let's head over to an RV campsite and I'll show you why. Oh, but before I do, somewhere around the halfway mark of this video, I'm going to drop a hint to win a prize at the end. So stick around for that. <laughs> Thanks for having me out, man. You're so very we welcome. are at Castlegar Golf Club and RV Park. Correct. Here in amazing Castlegar. This is a, a, a fantastic site. I love coming up here. Right on the golf course, right overlooking the city. Beautiful park area. One thing that's nice about this RV park compared to so many is you've actually got trees. You're not like crammed into a sardine can. You know, it really has this quiet, beautiful park-like feel up here. So how long has this uh, park been here? To be exact, I would say it's already been 17 years. It's only been in the past 10 that my wife Susan and I have been here and made things a little bit more accommodating. Okay. So longer sites, wider sites, yes. new benches. So do you have quite like a lot of uh, use for here is with fifth wheels, uh, goosenecks, uh, larger RVs? I tell you, because we extended all these sites, yeah. uh, it was because of all these big rigs coming in, big, huge motor homes. Yes. Fifth wheels that are now 38 to 40 foot or 44 oh, foot. Yeah. You know, so yeah, no, it's, it's, this is an amazing park. Unfortunately, we only got 18 sites that are electrical and water only. One of the tough things too, is a lot of these uh, RVs are just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And the manufacturers are all telling you all the great features you have. I mean, it's such a challenge for RV parks because I mean, if you're on a 50 amp, that's what you got. You got 50 amps. And these things, you turn on three air conditioning units and you're you're sucking more than 50 amps. Well, two for sure. Yeah, two for one, sure. One we recommend, but we've only got four sites that are 50 amps. The rest of them are all 30 amps. Yeah, and this is a bigger yeah. and bigger challenge yeah. that we're hearing at RV parks yeah. is they're trying to keep up to the massive demand of these units. Right. The circuitry also, when you plug in between an RV and an EV are different. Everyone goes out and buys those RV adapters when they go camping with an EV truck. And they end up getting to the sites and none of them work. Now, fortunately, when you're at RV parks like this, a lot of them will have a 50 amp plug. This is a NEMA 1450, which is fantastic if you're driving an EV. My Ford came with this portable level one and level two adaptable charger. So basically you can unplug this, there's your NEMA 1450 for these types of plugs. And then you can put in the adapter if you want to plug into a 110, which will take you days to charge. So you don't want to be doing that unless you're doing something at home or you've parked for a long period of time and you want to trickle charge. That's about its only benefit. So with a 50 app, it's basically plug and play. Um, in we go and we get a blue light right here on the screen. And then basically we just walk over and we plug into the truck and we are good to go. It's giving me an indication it's finding the service and it's currently charging the truck. So it's that simple, pulling into a campsite with a 50 amp. But what happens if we don't have a 50 amp unit? Well, we probably go and do something like this. We go to the local hardware store, we go to Home Depot, and we get all the different adapters that we can use so we're prepared. And here we are at the more common 30 amp plug-in that you're gonna find at a lot of campgrounds. And uh, we got a problem because this isn't going to go in this. We need an adapter. Oh, <laughs> I already plugged the, the end into my truck. It doesn't run the other way. You know, it's not like it's... Uh, I need 100 cc's of adrenaline and a root beer stat. Clear. <laughs> Looks fine, it's an RV, it's the right adapter. It goes from the, the plug here into there. So 30 amp and it goes to a 50 amp and we just plug it in there and ta-da uh, but we don't get any signal everything looks right but it's not and the reason for that is i buy cheap crap so i thought maybe i should go out and buy another one and spend more money which i did so i bought a bigger one with bigger handles and 
bigger cable. That'll work. I plugged it in to the 30 amp, three prong TTPA417B dash. That's the electrical term, I'm pretty sure. And then I plug this in and ta, we're ready with uh, no, no signal. In fact, the guys over at TFL EV, when they went on their big Alaska trip with their lightning, made this same mistake. No light. No power. Uh, off. On. Um, That's no, bad news. No light. In fact, every video I've seen made this same mistake. Some realized later what was going on. So we need to correct this before you make the same mistake that all of us have made and waste tons of money on these things that'll never work. Let's take a look inside one of these little farts and see what's going on. <laughs> I got to take it apart. <laughs> I think I... <laughs> Shit. On the inside, the wiring is completely different. When it's using a NEMA 1450, it doesn't pass the neutral line through to the charger. This puts the charger in a 240 volt only mode. According to techwalls.com, the issues lie with the compatibility between the power supplied by a TT30 outlet and what can be received via a NEMA 1450 adapter. In a nutshell, it's this. The TT30 outlet is a 120 volt only outlet that relies on that neutral connection. Given that EV chargers operate in that 240 volt only mode, they don't utilize the neutral wire, making it incompatible. Therefore, in the EV wired adapter, we can see that the neutral is bypassed, basically left empty and both hot prongs are connected in the NEMA 1450 end by running wires from one hot prong in the TT30 end, but leaving the other prong empty. So this one is actually built for EVs. This is by, they should really pay me for this, Park World, okay? Only for EV chargers. I now plug this in. Let's do the same thing, same sequence. We plug that in here and we plug this in here. There we go. And we've got a blue light. This is now working. We now have an adapter, unlike this little puppy, that's going to work when you go camping. You've got to have the right equipment. In some campsites, not a lot, they might have one of these. This is a four prong 1430p. So this and this are also EV specific. This part is built for EVs. If you use an regular RV adapter, unless it's an EV adapter, it might not work. The wiring similar. I don't think you're going to have the same problem. You do have two hots, a neutral and ground. Whereas in this, you have two hots, a neutral and ground. So I don't know about the wiring end of things, but I have heard people having issues when they've used the RV specific one. You can also use this with generators. And what's really cool is I can plug this particular one in the back of my truck. Let me show you that. If you've got the expanded pro power on board with your F-150 Lightning or other trucks as well, the Cybertruck is one. Another is the Silverado EV does have a 240 plug, but it's not a NEMA 1450. It's only 30 amps and it is this particular plug-in. You'll see there's a little locking unit right on the back here on this four piece. And you're basically four prong. You line up your locking piece, you plug it in and you lock it. There you go. And now we're ready to go off of the truck. We could charge another EV using this, or we can feed into a NEMA 1450 system. So this is a nice little adapter to have for the back of your truck. The moral of the story is be prepared. And, and to get prepared, Keep tuning into this channel for a heck of a lot more trucked up EV truck stuff. Say that twice. In fact, if you subscribe and like this particular video, thank you very much by the way, and live in continental United States or Canada, answer this question and be the first one in the comments to get it right and you win this. Uh oh, uh, just hold on a second. This, uh, why? Well, 
uh, I can't use the stupid thing because I kept buying the wrong ones. But if you have an RV, a generator, or an application for such an adapter, here's your chance to get one free. It's about a 50 buck value here in Canada. Actually, I think in Canada is about 70 bucks. So probably 50 bucks in the US. And along with your very own trucked up t-shirt to go along with it. Dumbass, what's the question? Right, what particular aspect of the RV adapter is causing it not to work with my EV truck charger? Write your answer below. Make sure you're a subscriber and you like to the video and good luck. As always, thanks for watching.